Canada's toughest series has arrived in the country's biggest city. Horsepower meets Hogtown. The True North Strong and Fast is ready to take on the six. When the NASCAR Pinty Series rolls into Toronto, it brings grit and grind to the streets. The points leaders coming into Toronto, Kevin LaCroix and Andrew Ranger, have had their successes on the 11-turn circuit, but the two have also had their hearts broken in the city. Today, 19 NASCAR Pinty Series late models get ready to bring the roar back to the lakeshore here on TSN. Hello and welcome to a beautiful day here in Toronto as we get set to bring you the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. The heart of the city, an exhibition place, will host round number four of the Pinty's series here in 2019. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis will patrol the pits for us here today. But Adam, the NASCAR series shares the limelight with the IndyCar series here in Toronto, but these 100 kilometer battles are always epic. The stars come out for this big race in five previous visits with the NASCAR Pinty Series on the streets of Toronto. Victory Lane has been shared by Andrew Ranger, Alex Tagliani, and Kevin Lacroix. Add to that mix LP Dumlin, who was dominant in practice yesterday, and I think you can see who the four favorites are to find Victory Circle here today. Well, it's funny. Two of those names you mentioned, Kevin Lacroix and Andrew Ranger, have already visited Victory Lane once each in 2019 they've had strong runs in the other races as well and that's why they sit atop the nascar pinty series point standings it's kevin lacroix who has a single point lead over andrew ranger the last race though all the press went to a young rafael lassard in the 07. the 17 year old dominated the short track at autodrome showed year and it would have been nice if rain hadn't shortened the end of the race to see what kind of a battle he would have had with Kevin Lacroix heading to the checkers, Dave. Well, let's take a look at E3 Spark Plugs qualifying, though, here in Toronto. And it was a little bit of drama that played out late in the going. In the third group of qualifiers that went out, everybody saw the 22 GM Pius Chevrolet of Mark Edge One camera and had sealed it up. They were congratulating. They thought he had the pull, but Alex Tagliani had another page to write in that story. I wouldn't want to play poker with Alex. He slow played that qualifying session. He was already second. He let everybody clear the racetrack, and then he turned the only sub one minute, 16 second lap to secure the E3 Spark Bucks pole position for today's race in dramatic fashion. It's the 45 year old's first E3 Spark Bucks pole award here in 2019. He'll share the front row with the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. And with that, let's get things underway here in the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. Drivers, Drivers start your engines! Michael Comperoni from Pinty's and Sandy Tonda giving the command for today's start your engines, David. What a show we're about to see. You're 100% right about that. We'll have a number of different onboards to take you around this track. We'll ride on board with David Thorndike. There's a good look at Andrew Ranger as he gets ready to go to work. And a good look at a very dark visor as the sun is actually about to set here in Toronto, Dave. Adam, let's take a look at this unique track built on the streets of downtown Toronto. It is a wild racetrack. Four distinct passing zones. Turn one is the first of them. Turn three, turn five, turn eight, Dave. And they're all going to build up to some pretty epic action during today's Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. The field is rolling. Let's take a look at your WeatherTech starting lineup. Your row number one, as we mentioned, Alex Tagliani and Mark Antoine Cameron. Row number two, Gary Clute in the 59. There's LP Dumoulin in the 47. Back to the third row, we've got Anthony Simone in the number one, Andrew Ranger in the 27. To row four is Alex LeBay in the 36, Kevin Lacroix in the 74. Then we look back to row number five, Peter Clute drives the 42, J.F. Dumoulin in the 04. Row six is Jason White in the 21, D.J. Kennington struggled a bit in qualifying in the 17. Back to the seventh row is Donald Teague in the 24 and Jason Hathaway in the three. Row number eight, Mark Dilley in the 64 and J.F. LaBerge in the 91. 
Row number nine has the 46 of Brent Taylor, the 56 of David Thorndike, and rounding up the field all by himself in row number 10, TJ Rinomato in the 0-2. Now, if you saw, there's a couple areas where there is standing water still on the racetrack. We had a pretty good rainstorm that hit exhibition grounds just a couple of hours ago. So that will play a factor early on in this race. Adam? The E3 Spark Plugs race analysis, Dave, this is a unique one. 35 laps. It is stifling hot and humid here today, and no pit stops on the agenda. With a check and a couple more stories before we get underway, let's go down to Todd. Guys, a couple of things to watch for in today's race. The rain you talked about that's moved through hasn't completely dried everywhere on the track. There are some damp areas. Also, the sun is lower in the sky because of the delay in the start time. A number of drivers have put extra tape on the windshield to help with visibility. Adam, you can see a good example of that on the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. They built up that tape on the front windscreen, but the field has doubled up as we get set for 35 laps, 100 kilometers here on the streets of Toronto. This is the tight area right before we get onto the front straightaway where we will see the green. And keep in mind, these are two teammates who mixed it up and did some serious damage in round one at CTMP. And Alex Tagliani in the 18, Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22. We're off for the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. Jockeying early on as you saw a lot of drivers poke their nose out looking for a way by. They decided to stay in line for the most part as we're clean through turn number one. Let's go down the backstretch for the first time. Jason White hard on the brakes, shifting through the gears down into turn number three. The field doing a nice job on a green racetrack, Dave. Should mention, too, a brand new sponsor on board from the 21 World Financial Group coming on board for this Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. And Jason looked awesome yesterday in practice and qualifying. He's really got a fire lit under him, Dave. the driver that everybody's con everybody considers a master in the NASCAR Pinty Series is Anthony Simone. He, I thought he was going to dive underneath Lacroix there. He was coming from way back. It looked like he had thoughts. And why do you think they consider him a master, Dave? He's either sat on the pole every race prior to this at Toronto or he's won the race. He didn't sit on the pole this weekend. My bet for favorite to win the race has to be Andrew Ranger based solely on statistics. That's true, but he did struggle a little bit in qualifying. He wasn't quite up to the Andrew Ranger st uh, standards we've seen here in the past. Well, speaking of not up to standards, Kevin Lacroix, a little bit further back than I would expect him. Now, Anthony Simone in the Silver Line number one is running better than he has in recent years, but Kevin Lacroix, you expect him to be contending at the very front of the field, and he's not even in the top five. Here comes Ranger underneath the weather tech, number 47, battle for fourth spot, and give it to the 27 Mopar Dodge today. Andrew Ranger. Lacroix was almost there to steal a spot, too. Really nice piece of driving by L.P. Dumoulin to give up that fourth spot, but make sure he didn't give up anymore. He defended on Kevin Lacroix. Good clean piece of racing by both of those drivers. It's awfully early in this race. Diving down low to the walls like that, especially in turn three, that was one of the areas where we did see moisture from the rainstorm that passed through, so it is a little bit dicey as heat keeps building in these general tires. This track, more so than most of the tracks will go to, if you make a move to the inside in any corner, you're leaving yourself exposed in the next corner in a really bad spot. So you really have to make sure where you can fall back into line and get up to a competitive rhythm and a competitive line again. Speaking of line, everybody stretches out single file at this point, just content to ride in the early going of this 35-lap race. We ride on board Mark Antoine Cameron. The fourth round of the NASCAR Pinties Series on TSN is brought to you by Pinties, making great food fun. Mopar, we built it, we know it. And by VP Racing Fuels. Still under green here in the Pinties Grand Prix of Toronto, and it is still the Rona EpiPen 
Chevrolet and the number 18 of Alex Tagliani out in front. It's amazing to me the gap has stayed the same with most of the drivers in the top six, Dave. A few car lengths between some of the drivers, one car length between others, but no one's really closed in and challenged yet. And here, Andrew Ranger babying the throttle, trying not to abuse those general tires as he follows the trail car number 59 of Gary Clute. Wow. Hammering the curves, though. Watching him power through that corner is unbelievable. It, it almost makes you forget that these are bulky, heavy stock cars, not the Indy cars people are used to seeing tear around this race course. And keep in mind, Gary Clute is no slouch on a road course in an Ascar Pinty Series cars. Here comes Andrew Ranger to the inside, hard under braking as you see the nose of that Dodge Challenger dive to the ground, and he completes the pass around the 59 of Gary Clute. But I was going to say, Clute finished fourth in this race just one year ago. And of course, Clute's only win in the NASCAR Pinty Series comes on a road course, not a street circuit, but a road course always up on the wheel for these events as LP Dumont has a look to the inside. Won't be making the move this time down Lakeshore Boulevard. Look at Anthony Simone, all kinds of out of shape in the silver line, number one, as he tries to close the gap to the back of the bumper to bumper number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. That's just his line. <laughs> Anthony Simone runs all out all the time in that Silver Line Tools number one as we ride along. Simone's had four starts here on the streets of Toronto, started an average of seventh. Unfortunately for him, three DNFs means he has an average finish of 20. He also unofficially has the most spectacular DNF in the history of maybe road course racing, but definitely, I think, on the streets of Toronto with his fireball of a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was a big one. And speaking of the wand of Anthony Simone, one of the drivers running uh, in support of laps for MD, a great cause that a few of the drivers are backing here in 2019. Those are some great views. The sun almost setting here in Toronto. We are racing in twilight here in the streets of Toronto. And again, not a whole lot of change. Things are bunching up a little low behind Gary Clute. Not sure if there's a problem on the 59 or if he's just running a race pace that he's comfortable with. Some drivers take the approach, Dave, that, that you don't pick up the pace until someone actually makes the move, and then you might decide to pick things up. Again, it's a long race. We're on lap six out of 35, so a lot of action left, and this is definitely one of the races where you run out of brakes towards the end. Have a look at this camera angle. On board the GM Pie number 22 of Mark Antoine camera, and a 360 view. drivers who looks oh so comfortable behind the wheel here on a street course. Walls on both sides, super intimidating for some, but not for Mark Antoine camera. In that particular camera really shows how bumpy, uh, not even rough, but terrain changes on this track. You really see how much the driver is jostling around. As we look at J.F. Dumoulin in the Spectre Premium 04, back in with DJ Kennington in the 17 for a top 10 spot. You can still, still see some moisture on the ground. It is drying up as the sun is now out. Temperatures are up, Adam, as you mentioned. Just in behind this group, there's the Hotel Le Concord, number 36 of Alex Obey, and here comes the 04 of Dumoulin back underneath the 17 of Kennington. Nice move by J.F. Dumoulin. Did you see how evil LeBay's car looked under braking? That car was really wagging its tail going into the corner. That's uncomfortable for a driver. It was one driver looking to pick up some spots after qualifying yesterday here on the streets of Toronto. Unfortunately, in the early going for this one, he's dropped back just a little bit as the pace seems to be just a little bit beyond his reach. Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22 is keeping pace with Alex Tagliani. They're opening a bit of a gap over Andrew Ranger. How much do you think he might be thinking about CTMP and the, the serious contact he had with his teammate Tagliani and, and hanging back there where he is but not losing any ground? You know, 
I, I don't think he is thinking about it at all. I think right now he's just running his own race, putting in his laps, trying to hit his marks and get comfortable. He knows this is a long race, and typically, here on the streets of Toronto, we have a caution at some point. That's going to bunch the field, give him another shot. So does he have to push it to make a pass right now? Probably not. You know, I got thinking about that very thing, Dave, with 19 cars in the field tonight. T.J. Renamato is, is a pure rookie. Everyone else in the field has some experience behind the wheel. If we were going to see a caution-free race here at Toronto, this would be the one. It'll be interesting to see if we do get that as we ride on board the Total number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. And there goes LaBerge underneath the 46 of Brett Taylor. And some news on the 46 team here this weekend, switching allegiances from CBRT over to the Ed Hackinson team. So Brett Taylor owns his equipment. He owns the race cars, but he's never prepared them. He had them prepared till now with CBRT under Joey McCombs' guidance. So he has taken those cars over to Ed Hackinson Racing. And uh, under the guidance of Jason Hathaway and Craig Masters and the group, they'll be preparing his equipment and moving forward. And remember, Jason Hathaway worked as a, a mentor, a driver coach to Cole Powell last year in that three car. It seemed to work out fairly well. Powell reaching victory lane, so maybe that's exactly what last year's Justin's Rookie of the Year wants to accomplish here in 2019 as we ride on board with the WeatherTech number 47 of LP Dumoulin. And this team running this weekend with a heavy heart uh, team member for the Jumelin Competition squad, Lynn Brousseau, unfortunately lo losing her battle with cancer. So the team running with her in their thoughts. There's decals on these cars, along with several others in the paddock, as everybody remembers a cheerful Lynn Brousseau. Such a sweet woman, so, such a sad story. She, it was a battle. And she will be remembered fondly for sure as Dumoulin works over the 59. And we got problems. The 46 of Brett Taylor off. That's turn number three. And Taylor goes to the runoff on Lakeshore Boulevard. He'll have to get that car righted. We're still under green. It appeared as though there was some... Yeah, you well, can see the signage on the back bumper of the 46. Yeah, exactly. He's dragging some signage along. So that's him at the top of the screen behind Mark Dilley. And down into three, he just ran out of racing room, climbs up the left rear of Dilley. Looks like he just couldn't get stopped in time. The 46 manages to get going once again, but significant damage to the 64 of Mark Dilley as well as the entire left rear fender is torn up. Staying under green, though, that's important to know. Staying under green, if I'm not mistaken, there's someone directly in front of our race leader. Yeah, that's David Thorndike in the Jim Bray own number 56. And we have to say a special happy birthday to Jim Bray's great granddaughter, Malia, who's turning six. And there you see the hand out the window by David Thorndike pointing the leaders by. He doesn't want to get involved in this battle for the lead, but that's exactly what can happen. And that's exactly why the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron and didn't have to pressure things as the 46 of Taylor finds pit lane. And this is a racetrack. This right here is a part of the racetrack. You do not want to encounter lap traffic. These tight S's as Brett Taylor headed down pit lane. Todd is on the scene. Cruz having a look at that 46. You can see some damage to the left rear, but the problem is no brakes on the 46. That's why he had the problem. Yellow out, full course caution now out on the track. And uh, that is the reason why, Todd, J.F. LaBerge and the Dagobert Dodge into the tire wall heavily, and that will require a full course caution. They'll have to get the heavy equipment out to move that car out and fix the tire wall. Well, the heavy equipment was already out there, and it moved the tire wall to begin with. <laughs> so now we need heavier equipment. So J.F. LaBerge, he is buried in that tire wall. Let's, all we're going to see is the tail end, and what, what I notice is the tires are not locked up in that entire image. Yeah, it could be another case of no brakes, as Brett Taylor had been mentioning to his crew. That's what he was suffering, but Tagliani leads under our full course caution. Welcome back to downtown Toronto. The mixed motorsport crew working hard on the left rear of Mark Dilley's number 64, Leland NTN bearing Ford. The fiberglass body all torn up from that run-in with Brett Taylor. Auto value on the hood of that number 64 of Mark Dilley. Always good to see some fresh images on these cars. Now, importantly, he'll get out as well and stay on the lead lap 
And there's a good look at T.J. Rinomato, as you mentioned. He's Mark Dilley's teammate and Justin's Rookie of the Year candidate. Only his fourth race, but he's keeping the fenders on, staying out of trouble. That's exactly what he needs to do here this race. Well, Dave, speaking of staying out of trouble, we're about to go back to green. That may not happen, but let's look at some people who are great at staying out of trouble. Road race aces, Andrew Ranger with a win percentage of 20%. Alex Tagliani with a win percentage of 30%. And how about Kevin McGraw over the last three years with a win percentage of more than 40%. He wins almost half the of every race he enters on a road course. It's amazing as we're back under green here in the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. Look at Ranger to the inside. I don't even know if that was a move for the lead or evasive action so he wouldn't hit Tagliani in the 18. But Andrew Ranger leading the way down Lakeshore Boulevard. And that hurt the 22 of Marc Antoine Cameron the most. He was pushed way up to the outside, and he'll drop several positions, barely hanging on to the top five now. Yeah, Marc Antoine Cameron on the outside of Anthony Simone and Kevin Lacroix. That's a tall order for any race car driver, but boy, did he ever sail it into turn three. There you see Peter Clute in the 42, getting roughed up with the one silver line tools of Anthony Simone. And the 74 of Kevin Lacroix in that battle as well. There's a good look at the Silver Wax the Hotel Le Concord, number 36 of Alex LeBay. And I can't tell you how impressed I am with racing Jason White, driver of the number 21. He is mixing it up with some good race car drivers, but let's look at the replay. It almost looks like a defensive move. Ranger swings to the inside where he was going to run all over Tag the any into turn one. Similar move to what he did last year to win this race in the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. Couple down shifts, a pump on the brakes, and away we go. There's nobody better under braking than Andrew Ranger. We've got a lot of good race car drivers, but under braking, my money is on Ranger most of the time. And he's stretched out about six to eight car lines over Alex Tagliani, who runs second. Yeah, Tagliani, for the first time, is chasing someone here. That exhibition place in the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. It's race number four of the 2019 season. And we are approaching the halfway mark of this race, and I think the drivers have come to realize as Mark Antoine Cameron to the inside of LB Dumoulin for the third spot. I think these drivers have come to realize we may not have many restarts, so it's time to get up and get some. After they cruised for the first dozen laps or so, now they are starting to get more aggressive. Once again, a gap between those front-running five cars. Back to Kevin Lacroix, Anthony Simone, Peter Kluge. You can see the top five. Just a few car lines between each of them, and then ever so much of a gap back to Kevin Lacroix. And there is the 04 of J.F. Dumoulin battling with the 36. That's a battle for ninth spot, and give the spot to the Spectra Premium 04. J.F. Dumoulin passes a lot of race cars, Dave. It's partly because he's a fantastic race car driver and partly because his qualifying needs a, a little bit of improvement. <laughs> he's always moving forward. He really is. And remember, he won his first race just one race ago, but as a car owner, not as a car driver. He's still hoping to reach victory lane as a driver. Good point. Of course, Rafael Lasarda showed here picking up the win and that Dumoulin equipment. Look at Alex Tagliani, he's closing the gap on Andrew Ranger, the race leader. A little bit of smoke out of Rangers 27, I believe that was tire smoke, off the right rear under braking. Gary Clute again closing the gap on the WeatherTech 47 of LP Dumoulin. Turn three is a very good passing opportunity for these cars. Turn number eight is another good one, and these cars will be there very shortly. Tagliani starting to close the gap on Andrew Ranger. Yeah, just a couple of car lengths between the top two, and then there's a gap growing back to Mark Antoine Cameron. He's still got a good sight line on these race leaders as we ride on board with Alex Tagliani. Sponsor of Alex Tagliani, he's on board cameras. 
I just love hearing these engines at song, and here comes Tagliani under braking. Turn number three is where he'll take over top spot once again, put the Rona Happy Pen Chevrolet back to the top of the charts. Is it just me, or did Andrew Ranger not fight that whatsoever? You might be right. He might have looked over and seen how committed Tagliani was, but if you look at the VP Racing ticker at the top of the screen, still a lot of racing left to go. We're only on lap 18. Yeah, just to the halfway point of this event, and I, I don't expect Tagliani's going to get away from Ranger. But we talk about this race after race, especially on road courses. We've got about four drivers in the field who really prefer to lead laps. Tagliani, Ranger, Lacroix, and Mark antoine Cameron. Someone like L.P. Dumoulin, he's content to be this close to the league because it's not time to really use up that equipment yet. But some of them really prefer to be the pace setters. There is the cross flags, but as you mentioned, that interesting stat from our statsman, Bryce Turner, the 22 of Mark antoine Cameron has never led a lap on the streets of Toronto. You're right, he was trying to take the lead, wasn't he, when he stuffed it into the tire barrier? He's been, he's been at the front every single time he's been in this event, but he hasn't quite been there to lead that lap, but he's right there right now inside the top three. Have a look in the background, that red number 74 of Kevin Lacroix inching his way towards the top five as we ride on board with Cameron. Watch the bumps. And look at the sun, too, when you get a chance. There it is. Look at how blinding that is as the drivers look for the apex in some of those turns. So glad you pointed out precisely where the sun was, Dave. <laughs> Alex Dagliani, well in control once again here on the streets of Toronto. We'll take a quick break on TSN. Welcome back to race number four, the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series here on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is pit side for us this afternoon. And this, a good battle for fifth spot between the 59 of Gary Clute trying to hold off your points leader coming into this event, Kevin Lacroix. Kevin Lacroix applying the pressure. And Dave, while we were away, Mark Antoine Cameron got around the 27 of Andrew Ranger, so he is back in that second position. And I expect now that he's second, you're gonna see him try to get up on tag because I don't think he wants, if there is another restart, I don't think he wants to restart on the outside again. I think we're gonna see Cameron try to attack for the lead. Just like the 74 is trying to attack there for fifth spot up around the outside of Gary Clute. Clute, a smart move, protect the inside, take away that passing lane, and he'll hold that position as Kevin Lacroix is starting to pick up steam here now in the latter half of this race. And here comes Cameron closing on the 18 attack beginning. You can see a little bit of tape flapping off the driver's window attack the end. He's not sure what that is. Interesting, we'll keep an eye on it for sure, but Cameron, as he comes out of turn number 11, look for him to put together a run towards turn number one. See, Tag's just a little bit better coming out of turn 11. Tag got a nice run off the turn. Cameron closes in as we're gonna have a look at the pass. Here's Cameron getting around Andrew Ranger again. Ranger not putting up very much fight. Sees Cameron going by, concedes the position. Check it out from our 360 camera. You get to see all angles. Cameron hard you on the brakes. Oh, wow. That, when race car drivers talk about tire chatter, that's what you were hearing in that kind of bum, 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 bum. That's the back tires bouncing up and down. That's a great way to spin out a race car. It's like pulling the e-brake on your street car. If you've ever done that in a snowstorm, you know exactly how tail-happy the race car, your car, can get. But Dave, that would be so irresponsible. It, well, I've never done it, I promise. With OPP Sergeant Kerry Schmidt <laughs> in our midst here today in downtown Toronto. Uh, with the lesson of keeping racing on the track, it's a good lesson. Take racing off the street, keep it on the track. Let's see if Cameron can get a better run through 11. Tagliani got a good run off last lap. But see how much Cameron's able to close in. He was right up on his back bumper by the time they got to turn one last time through. 
Catches a sniff of the draft just at the end of that straightaway, that main front stretch. And look at Lacroix and Clute are still battling. Nose to tail, Clute holding off your points leader. A bumper to bumper 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Uh, bumper to bumper is right. They almost <laughs> were bumper to bumper there. Lacroix able to get close to the 59, but not able to make that move. Now we've got three pairs of cars, Tag and Cameron, Ranger and Dumoulin, and now Clute and Lacroix doing battle for first, third, and fifth position. Oh, Lacroix squirrely going into the turn. Oh, and nearly gets into the trail con number 59 of Kevin or Gary Clute. They, they made contact. Look at the fender of Yeah, you're right. He Lacroix. did. It's all bunched up on the left front corner of the 74. That's how tight things were here in turn number three. As everybody has now paired off the one and the zero four, this is a battle for seventh spot between Anthony Simone and J.F. Dumoulin. Boy, oh boy, if you're a fan of stock car racing on road courses, you've got lots of battles to enjoy here this afternoon, and we've still got more than 10 laps to go. It's a regular square dance party. They paired off two by two. I, I was going to say that, and then I thought more and didn't. <laughs> Lacroix still hounding the 59 at Clute. Looks to the inside, down into one. Tucks back in line. He'll run the same line as Clute and probably trying to see if he can win the drag race down to turn three. Don't forget, Clute's crew chief, John Fletcher, picked up a win just last race at Autodrome Chaudière. He was the crew chief for Raphael Lassar. It was an impressive win. Now look at Lacroix. He's up in the draft to Clute. Looks to the inside. He's going to make the move this time. Wow, power move into three. Now he's been too close for too long to be denied again, and Clute that time knew if he was going to defend, he was probably going to end up in the tire wall. Ten laps to go now here in the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. It is still Alex Tagliani out in front of the field. Oh, and J.F. Dumoulin's gotten around Anthony Simone for position, so Dumoulin up to seventh. Dumoulin, the Spectra Premium 04, makes the move around the Silverline Tools number one as we ride on board. And Simone, there you see the laps for MD. To benefit muscular dystrophy, every lap he leads, money gets put together and donated to muscular dystrophy. It's a great cause, great way to raise money as well. I'd like to see a statistic. When was the last time Anthony Simone saw lap 25 in Toronto? <laughs> it's true. It's still been, in the car. Yeah, three DNFs in four races for that driver, and he's very much in the thick of things here today. Look at up at the front in the lap traffic. David Thorndike will pull to the side as Tagliani down low. There goes Cameron as well, and Thorndike will look in his mirror and see other cars coming through in Andrew Ranger and now LP Dumoulin. And I make light of Anthony Simone, but what they have done since moving that operation over to White Motorsports has been really, really good for everyone involved. Simone's having some great runs. Yeah, he has. Unfortunately, hasn't had the finishes he would like to see here in 2019, but has had some tough luck. As there is Jason Hathaway. Good look at the Kubota, number three, along with the 24 of Donald Teach and the Circuit Acura, number 24. They're chasing the 21 of Race and Jason White. And right behind the Castrol Edge, number 17, is DJ Kennington. So a four-car battle for position. Remember, with that Kubota number three of Jason Hathaway, that was a brand new car at the first event of the season, so maybe still a little teething problems for that team. Donald Teach looks to the inside. He'll back out of it as Jason Hathaway closes the door down into the corner. Not quite time for desperation moves yet, but with eight laps to go, Donald Teach sees three cars in front of him. Those are valuable positions out there for a driver who admittedly isn't as strong on road courses as he is on the ovals. One of the teams this week having a big press conference introducing a new racing app. It was 22 Racing that partnered up with Worldcast to bring a brand new app and sort of a next level autograph card. You pick up an autograph card and it pops up drivers and cars 3D. It's pretty neat. So next time you're at the races, pick up an autograph card, download the app, 
Well, and to hear them talk about it is going to be so much more. So go to 22racing.ca slash app. It's Jason White with a big move to the inside of DJ Kennington. That puts Jason White inside the top 10. Hearing Jason White inside the top 10, if you look back years ago and oh! drug oh, and just like that, into the wall as the back end of the 21 steps out. He's lost the rear deck lid. Debris on the racetrack, full caution now. And he barely that debris. slowed down. That was a significant shot to the wall. I was just gonna say, seeing Jason White in the top 10, a driver who really likes road courses, but he may not like this, a heavy hit. You know what, it's a good thing he got the car so far sideways, because if he had slapped it, let's watch. If he had drifted the car and slapped it sideways, he would have done a ton of damage. And here's problems for the 59 of Gary Clute. And there you see Larry Jackson, the crew chief for the 21. He's over asking for the deck lid okay, from Gary so, Clute. So Jason White knocks the deck lid off the 21. NASCAR rule, you cannot race without a trunk lid. So Jason White is going to need one. Larry Jackson, being the veteran that he is, knows that's what he needs, knows that Gary Clute must have a significant problem. So he's already gone down to ask for the beats off of his car. And look at just seven laps to go, but that is heartbreak for the driver there, Gary Clute, who was running up near the front of the field pretty much all day. Todd? Gary Clute has unbuckled and got the helmet off, and I can tell by the expression on your face, this is a frustrating one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's frustrating, you know. Would have been a little bit more frustrating if we were right up th front like we thought we were, but I don't know, we were just loose all race. I don't know if it happened right away, if it started to go away, or if, when LaCroix got into the back of us, that hurt us, but, you know, good effort. Got to thank my team, thank the fans, Trailcon, Mirka, hope they're happy, you know. Uh, Want to do some more, and uh, I love this stuff. See you back here soon. Well, and the rumor mill has it as we look at Gary Clute's deck lid going onto the Jason White car, because you saw Larry Jackson running down pit lane <laughs> with it. Rumor has it we might see more Gary Clute in 2020. Well, they're gonna tape that deck lid on, and Tagliani will lead it back to green when we return. Welcome back to the streets of Toronto and the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto as we get set for restart number two. Look at the field bunching up through turn number 11 onto this main straightaway. The green flag will wave once again and watch for this land rush start into turn number one. Yeah, a little bit of contact there we saw. Wow, between Cameron and Tagliani. Look at Cameron down into one on the outside for the lead. You saw Tagliani defend that inside line. He didn't want to let Ranger get through there once again, now they'll go side by side down Lakeshore Boulevard. Ranger will go from the inside to the outside as Tangley and he has body work flapping in the breeze. And with the muddy suit on the line, here comes Kevin Lacroix. Look at that, he's hung back for so many laps and now Lacroix is in the fray as Tangley and he muscles his way into second spot. Ranger back to third and now Lacroix into fourth. And look at Ranger sliding. Ranger is driving the heck out of that race car. Mark Antoine Cameron trying to distance himself from Alex Tagliani in second. Well, as the rest of the field starts to sort themselves out, it is Cameron who's able to open Problem. up a bit of a gap until now. You could hear Cameron losing control, losing traction. Oh, my goodness. Contact from one car. Oh. Great job by everyone to get around as Mark Antoine Cameron backs off the tire wall. He bounced out enough that he's able to just put it in gear and head back out. Obviously, caution is flying once again. This is a full course caution as parts and pieces are flying off the GM Pie number 22. He was nowhere near the apex of that corner. He had overshot it. I wonder if we're going to get it on board because I want to listen for the chatter. You heard the first squeal, yeah. tires breaking traction, and then you hear nothing and squeal again. So he basically had nothing to slow the car down with once that car started to chatter, and that's what happens. He got up out of the groove and slammed the tire wall. All the wheels still pointed in the right direction. Mark Antoine Cameron was 
your race leader before that run in with the tire wall in turn number eight. Tank Liani is back out front. We're now in the NASCAR overtime here in Toronto. A green white checker to settle this event. Now, Mark Antoine Cameron is still in the field, but Alex Tagliani, Andrew Ranger will lead them back to green here on the front stretch. There's Cameron. Look at Ranger getting out ahead. That's not a wise move. Tagliani fires first. Ranger's in no man's land. Yeah, it's Tagliani who controls the restart. And there you see a little bumping as well as a couple drivers got together. The 24 of Donald Teach was one of them. Down into turn number one. And yeah, Tagliani had that big run. He'll take the lead off of turn one with LP Dumoulin moving into third. The other driver that made contact with the 24 was the 17 of DJ Kennington. But have a look now. Turn three is going to be a spot to make a pass, and Ranger is right there knocking on the door. Remember, if they take the white flag, that means the next flag ends the race. So they've got to get to the white flag. And then it's every man for themselves. Well, it already is. Dumoulin protecting third spot as the 74 of Kevin Lacroix drops back one position into fourth spot. But you can still see so tightly bunched. And look at J.F. Yeah. Dumoulin, the Spectre M04. It's sort of a, where did he come from? Up into the top five. He's great at passing cars as Alex Sackley and he hangs the back end of that 18 out. Watch the different lines they run through these S's. Tagliani out of shape. Tagliani drifting it through the final few corners. Here on the streets of Toronto, see if he can get that run out of 11. He does. The car straight, but Ranger right in the toe. This will be an opportunity for a pass. The white flag is out. Ranger looks to the outside. They might have made contact all the way to the outside into turn number one. Now who can get on the throttle the best? Boy, now it is time to go as Tagliani throwing sheets of fiberglass into the wind as Andrew Ranger takes a peek on the inside, tucks back in for the draft down Lakeshore Boulevard. This is what Tagliani needs to do. Wow, to the outside, Ranger sideways under braking, contact into three. And Dueling checks up as well so as not to get caught up in whatever was going to happen with the top two, but everybody stayed straight. There are two more prime opportunities to pass. One of them is coming right up here. Otherwise, it's going to have to be a Hail Mary by Ranger. Watch Ranger as he is the shark hunting the prey. Not enough room in turn number eight for the 27 Mopar Dodge to stick it underneath the 18 of Tagliani. Turn 11 is his last chance. He's got to get to his bumper and try to lighten him up and then race into the checkered flag. Here's the move for the win. He's getting close. Ranger right on the back bumper, but he won't have enough to the checkered flag will come the 18 of Alex Tagliani, your winner in the streets of Toronto. Ranger second, Dumoulin third, Lacroix fourth, GF Dumoulin fifth, what a show. And how about Jason White back into the top 10? Crew Chief Tyler Case giving his driver instructions on how to get to victory lane. Been a couple of years since you were there with this team, but you'll enjoy this one. Yes, we were there two years ago. We should have been there last year. Oh, Alex did a great job wheeling that car. Got to thank Rona, EpiPen, all our partners, Cantork. It was a great day. Go enjoy the celebration. Thank you. NASCAR overtime, and all these cars still have their fenders on, Dave. Amazing, and a big thank you to NASCAR, the general manager of this track, Jeff Atkinson, for getting this race in. A big win for Tagliani. Now, welcome back to Victory Lane Ceremonies here on the streets of Toronto. What an event. What a final few laps to decide this one as the winner steps out. After taking a second to get a cold drink, the smile is visible as Alex Tagliani climbs out of that number 18 machine. He's going to take his time, wave that checkered flag in celebration. A big salute to his team for giving him a car that could win. Alex Tagliani had a blistering qualifying lap, and boy, you had a you had a fight into overtime again in this one. You came out victorious this time. Yeah, I mean, uh, the team did a fantastic job. The 22 racing team uh, brought two great cars here, uh, the 22, the 18. 
Uh, Donald was uh, doing great in qualifying. He we got blocked. So uh, team is doing good. Not as good as what we wanted to be on the to. oval, but uh, it seems like we turned our championship around around this place. This place has been good to us. So hopefully uh, this is the beginning. Big boost of the championship for Alex Tagliani, the winner in Toronto. The crew examining the damage to the back end. It doesn't matter anymore as we take a look at the final results, the auto value final results here. A steady day for Anthony Simone with the top six finish. And Peter Clute, he, we didn't talk much about him, but he was a contender. And even with that damage, the 21 of Jason White comes home inside the top 10. Brett Taylor salvaging a top 15. Good run for TJ Renamato as well. And LeBay with a quiet DNF. Andrew Ranger, another fight with Alex Tagliani right down to the end. Didn't get the win this time, but a good race and points for you. Very good. Uh, Sirius, I need to thank my team. They worked really hard this weekend. And uh, the Mopar 27 was fast right in the beginning, and uh, we proved it. And uh, we were behind uh, Camila and Alex. And uh, like you said, Green White Trekker, it's uh, always exciting. And uh, the, the door open. I jump on it. So... Uh, Finished second. We tried with Alex at the end, but uh, he didn't did a mistake, nothing. So uh, uh, very happy, you know, for a second place finish here in Toronto. And uh, I think we, we lead the championship. So uh, very happy about my, my Mopar team. And uh, we are going west right now. So uh, very exciting. Well, it should be very exciting because Andrew Ranger leads here as your points leader. And historically, those who are at the front of the points after Toronto tend to fare well at the end of the season. And Alex Tagliani is very good at those oval tracks when we go west, so he could get himself right back into contention, Dave. Tagliani taking his spot on the top step of the podium here in Toronto, joined with Andrew Ranger and LP Jubilee. Strong runs from all three. This NASCAR on TSN broadcast has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn by Silver Wax, and by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a loo. The celebration will be brief, David. It is time to hit the road and go west for three exciting short track races. The first two will be at Wyatt Group Raceway in Saskatoon, the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s from all of us at TSN. We'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.